This meeting is being recorded. Hi, my name is Sue Sutcliffe, and I am so thrilled to be here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about alternative legal solutions. And, and why are we talking about alternative legal solutions? Well, I'll tell you, it, it was inspired by National Brutus Day, which is March 15th. So often reviled, certainly by Dante, was Marcus Junius Brutus Minor, known to most as Brutus, or more simply, et tu brute. So why dedicate a holiday to this most heinous, <laughs> heinous of individuals? This slayer of kings and betrayer of friends? Why, my good people? Because Brutus Day reminds us that even in this modern age, betrayal, super, subterfuge, and backstabbing is still alive and well. So when we came across that, when we were planning social media, it, uh, you know, was looking at it and thinking, well, why would somebody celebrate National Brutus Day. And the fact of it is, is that you know, what we, as business people, we all experience that. Actually, as people, we experience modern day Brutus. And so I thought, you know, I know people. I know people that are in the legal industry. So um, it's my honor to moderate this fun and knowledgeable panel consisting of lawyers, mediators, and paralegals to discuss alternative legal solutions in Durham Region. We'll be talking about the options for legal solutions in Durham Region, how alternative dispute resolution can work for you in commercial, elder, family workplace, and many other legal areas, and the importance of training and staying current on our respective fields. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce our panel, and I'll just put their uh, introductions here up on the screen. So this is our wonderful uh, panel of uh, legal professionals. Uh, we've got um, Audrey Eisner, who is a qualified mediator with private elder family mediation uh, practice called Eisner Live Mediation Services. Now, Audrey serves as the Executive Director of Community Justice Alternatives of Durham Region, an organization that specializes in free community and restorative justice mediation. We also have Helen Lightstone. Now, Helen is a chartered mediator with a Master of Laws in Dispute Resolution from York University Osgoode Hall Law School. Dubbed the mediation lady by her students, Helen's also a respected and experienced professor of mediation, alternative dispute resolution, and founder of Lightstone Mediation Services. We also have John Tebert. Now John is a partner of Cochrane War LLP. He holds a Bachelor of Arts in Criminology from the University of Ontario Institution of Technology, a Bachelor of Law Honours from the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom, a Diploma in Police Foundations, and an Honours Graduate Certificate in Paralegal Studies from Durham College. He also sits on as a President of the Community Justice Alternatives of Durham Region. Now I'm so uh, thrilled to have you all all uh, with me today, and I and I and I appreciate you all taking the time um, to. Uh, I'm just going to just adjust my screen here. Um, I, I appreciate you all taking the time to uh, to, to to have a discussion with me today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you um, for having us. Oh, well, my, my pleasure. Um, I, I, I took the liberty of asking for some questions in advance, so I have questions for all of you. Uh, and so I, I'll try to kind of be gentle on you, so, but I'm sure you guys are all really good at this kind of stuff. So, um, Audrey, I'm going to start with you. Um, one of the questions was, I don't have any money for a lawyer. Are there any free or subsidized mediation services available? Okay. Um, actually, yes, th there are. Uh, at Community Justice Alternatives, we offer community mediation uh, free to the community, and we also offer victim offender reconciliation, also known as restorative justice, free to, uh, to the community. Uh, mm -hmm. So community mediation would be neighbors having problem with other neighbors, fences, uh, property boundary, noise complaints, um, things that you know you may need a lawyer for. And certainly CJA would recommend that if that is the best course of action. But we offer the mediation uh, by well-qualified volunteers. Wow, that's awesome. I didn't even know that was a, a, a possibility until recently. So um, that's, that's really cool. Um, Helen, uh, I've got a question for you. Um, sure. So when should you resolve conflict? When's the best time? Okay, the best time um, is 
as soon as you realize you're in conflict, that's the best time to resolve it. So I once heard this great saying, and it was very simple, resolve conflict at the, at the lowest possible level, as soon as you know. Because if you don't resolve conflict right away, it escalates. You, it's human nature to talk to people, right? And to vent. So whatever your conflict is, now you've brought in more people. So it's escalating for you, you've dragged in more people, and all of a sudden, instead of two people being in conflict, you've got a whole team of people being in conflict and people taking sides. So resolve conflict at the lowest possible level. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, in the days before social media, they used to say that, you know, uh, if somebody got upset, they would tell a few people. But now, right. like, wow, if you get yeah. upset. Dude. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John, okay, here's one for you. Uh, perfect for, um, uh, for you. I have a tenant who has been making excessive noise. Can a paralegal help? That's an interesting question. Advocating for yourself can be difficult and the legal system can be confusing. But at Cochrane Moore LLP, we strive to give our clients confidence, clarity, and sound legal advice. If your tenant is causing issues that significantly interfere with your legal rights as a landlord or the reasonable enjoyment of other tenants, you do have options. Our team of skilled paralegals can attempt to resolve issues through court negotiations. We can issue formal notices. We can file applications on your behalf to evict. And we can attend mediations and hearings, providing you with a full range of legal services. That's awesome. I know I wouldn't want to get involved in it. It can be really tricky. And I mean, you can say the wrong thing and not even know that you're saying the wrong thing, right? And get yourself in even deeper. Um, Absolutely. Awesome. Or if you don't know the right evidence to call, it can be very tricky. And that's why a skilled professional is necessary. Makes a lot of sense. Um, Audrey, can you tell us a bit about elder mediation? Can you explain what that is? I've heard a lot of people talking about that. Absolutely. Um, so elder mediation, very simply put, is... Uh, mediations dealing with adults 55 years and older. Um, but specifically elder mediators, well-trained elder, elder mediators uh, may have more training in the sensitive issues that affect, you know, elderly uh, people. So really older adults. So, you know, a 55 year old man has to tell his 85 year old dad that he can't drive anymore. Mm. Um, yeah. So, um, siblings fighting over who's going to look after mom yeah those are common those are common issues where an elder mediator who's who's well skilled uh understands the sensitivity and the focus is on the well-being of the elder so best interest of the child and family mediation best interest of the older person in in elder mediation and that's simply put there's a lot more to it but oh i bet i bet I, you know, uh, that, yeah, almost definitely. And it, it's horrible to think that, you know, the, the pillars of our society end up with these issues. But, you know, the older I'm getting, the more I'm hearing about this stuff. And it's kind of scary what's going on, you know. And I think it's great that, that somebody's there to make sure that that priority of it being um, the senior is at the forefront, you know. Um, That's right. Most definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Helen, here's one for you. Um, I think it's too late to mediate. What should I do? Well, I like to say it's never too late to mediate. There is always the opportunity to talk to somebody if you want. But but usually you really have to sort of do some soul searching and find out like what is holding you back. You know, what's preventing you from moving forward with a mediation process. But um, one of the things that a person also needs to consider as they're sort of dragging things out and they're, they're sort of... Um, you know, maybe postponing that need to talk to somebody is what is their alternative if they don't mediate? We call it, the industry term is BATNA. What is your best alternative to a negotiated agreement? Ooh. So you have to really stop and think, what are you going to do if you don't resolve that issue at that time when you have the opportunity? Mm -hmm. And as John could uh, probably tell you, some in some cases, a BATNA to resolving an issue, an alternative is going to court. So you have to really sit down and weigh, do I have to, should I suck it up and mediate and hope for a better outcome than what my best alternative is if I don't? So mm -hmm. it is never too late to mediate. And it doesn't matter how messy things get, it's never too late. 
I guess with the, with the right skill there, it can be really uh, beneficial for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, John, I got one for you. I'm having issues with my boss since I returned from mat leave. I was hired to be a supervisor, and now my boss is telling me I have to clean the washrooms. I can't do my regular office work. It feels like a demotion. What should I do? Uh, depending on some of the facts of your case, there are plenty of options that a paralegal could help assist you with. Uh, if you're unionized, you might want to talk to your union representative, and if that fails, file a grievance or a complaint with the labor board. Alternatively, this could be considered termination and you could bring in your employer to court for wrongful dismissal, or it could be discrimination. This could be something that you pursue under the Provincial Human Rights Code or the Federal Human Rights Act, depending on where you work. Now, with all that being said, though, the first thing you want to do is speak to somebody who has the knowledge and experience to choose the right approach and the right path to make. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, for sure. And, and that's a whole lot of law to deal with. I mean, you'd have to, to be able to sort out kind of where you go for sure. I wouldn't even know the first thing to do there in that situation. Um, Audrey, I'm having problems with a neighbor and the bylaw office says they can't help. Is the lawyer, a lawyer the only solution? Uh, no, not at all. Although a lawyer may be the best solution. So it depends very much on the circumstances. Um, if, if it's something, if, if your neighbor is willing to come in to an organization like CJA of Durham, sit down and discuss it in a mediated uh, atmosphere, it's very safe, it's secure, completely confidential. So if the two neighbors are willing to try to work it out, then mediation, and it is free to the community, is by far the best option. Um, and meet, you know our intake managers understand what issues can be solved at mediation, or at least can be attempted to be solved. So definitely it's something that, that we could try to help you with. Wonderful, wonderful, that's awesome. Um, Helen, a colleague at work approached me this morning. They wanna talk, they seem upset, and I don't know why, what should I do? Okay, very good question. Because sometimes a person in conflict doesn't actually realize that they're in conflict. So uh, it's, it, is, it's a, it is a loaded, loaded question. So one of the things I would suggest is the person who is being approached needs to sit down and really listen as to what, what is being said. You know, there's that thing you might hear that we're born with two ears and one mouth so we can listen fully. I, I um, go back to uh, one of the, the six well, six elements that drive conflict, and this is what a person really needs to listen for. So is it that they're just having a bad day? Is there a relationship issue that really, really needs to be addressed? Is there a value difference in what's going on? Is somebody sort of thinking, you know, my idea of, of, of what's right is different than yours? Typically in the workplace, it could be a structure problem. There's maybe the way the office is being run that they don't really like, or they, you know, there could be a, a question of, of how it's being operated. There could be interest. Maybe somebody's a little unsure of what's the process of taking that's taking place. And then finally, it could be something as simple as uh, data. So somebody could be upset with you because you haven't got your project done on time and that holds up somebody else. So information is missing for that person to move forward or there's too much data. So they're feeling overwhelmed, right? So you've really got to listen to one of those six areas, which do you think it is? Because some of them are very easy to resolve, like, uh, you know, the data one, you, you know, you didn't get your work in on time and I can't move forward. What's going on with that person that they can't move forward? Maybe something's going on at home. Um, so it would be up to that person to really, really listen and, and try and source out what is that main reason that, that somebody is upset with them. Yeah. And listening. Yeah. And, you know, and listening is so hard. I'm hearing a lot about uh, being present. And yeah. that faster technology is going that, that um, you know, people are really having trouble, like their attention spans are going down. And, yeah. you know, we're all busy now. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, here's a question from a realtor. So, John, we'll pass this one to you. 
Um, I'm a realtor and my client didn't pay commission on a buyer representation agreement. What are my rights and can a paralegal help? So short answer, yes, the law is on your side. Uh, now, if your client is signed a BRA, that's a buyer representation agreement that hasn't paid your commission despite the hours you provided of service, mm -hmm. uh, you do have the right to pursue your money in court. Uh, with Cochrane and Moore LLP, we do represent brokerages to collect these unpaid fees. Often we'll start with a letter of warning in the hopes that the client will realize they've wronged you. If that doesn't work, Cochrane and Moore LLP will manage your matter from start to finish so that you can get back to doing what you do best. That would be helping people find their new home. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Lots of people doing that right now. Um, Audrey, my teenage son is getting in trouble at school. The police are involved. What is calm? Well, um, that's unfortunately not as unusual as you might think, and a lot of parents face these kinds of issues. Um, so we have a program at CJA called CALM, C-A-L-M. It's Conflict, Anger, Learning Communication, and Mediation. It's geared toward youths who, um, you know, it's, it's kind of anger management for youth. It's oh. one one, four different sessions dealing with each of those main topics. Um, and we have a great coordinator who, who talks to the youth. The youth are very often um, quite open. You know, one-on-one -on -one is fantastic versus some of the group uh, anger management offerings that you might find. It's, it's very well priced. Um, and, um, and it's been around, we've been doing calm programming for probably 15 years. We also do it in groups. We take it into schools and, uh, and other organizations that might find that there's some friction amongst the youth. Yeah, it seems to be, it seems to be, it seems to be I've heard a lot of talk about toxic schools where the leadership <laughs> is, is really maybe um, not as great. And so it comes down and, uh, you know, the kids obviously pick up on it. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I see, you know, also with, um, you know, like we need calm for a lot of adults, I know. So do we, we act occasionally do adults and we're actually looking at expanding our offerings uh, and fine tuning it because adult issues are, you know, somewhat different than youth issues. Um, mm -hmm. But absolutely. Um, so you do, CG does offer uh, anger management programs? We only, they're all individualized. So ours oh. are all one-on-one. -on -one. Um, oh, unless we're doing a group presentation to a, a youth group or something like that. Um, so yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Helen, this one's for you. Okay. I, I must have a difficult conversation. You're getting all these, all the difficult conversations. That's okay. The <laughs> lady can handle it. Yeah. Uh, I must have a, meet, a difficult conversation with someone in the workplace. How do I approach it? Okay. Well, I see the look of terror on your face already. <laughs> it's all good. Um, the, the last thing that you want to do when you're approaching somebody is point the finger at them and say, this is all your fault, right? So people get very defensive if you're going to point the finger and say, hey, if you wouldn't have been doing what you did, you wouldn't be at, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in right now. Mm. So, so you want to be very careful with how you're going to phrase things. And I would always recommend what they call the I statement. So the I statement is going to de-escalate because as soon as somebody hears you have to talk, their back is up already. So an I statement is going to de-escalate everything. Mm. So yeah, so what you want to do, it's typically done in three steps and, and it's challenging. I would probably recommend the person write it out ahead of time. You talk about the observed behavior. You talk about how the observed behavior impacts you. And then you invite the person to brainstorm ideas. But the trick to this is, let's say for example, you wanna talk about the observed behavior. You would not say it with you in it. When you do this, you tick me off. Oh, okay. I've noticed that when this happens, this is how I'm gonna feel. And and you you work it from there. So. That's the best way to start, and it should de-escalate and take the blame off the person. It then becomes a conversation that's more inclusive. Yeah. And when you're going to invite them to brainstorm ideas, it's like, what works for us to get through this conflict? That's, ba that's the best place to start. It's called an I statement. I would start there. 
That sounds really good. I yeah. think that that's really interesting. That can help me with my husband too, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next time that something happens, I'll just say I, I a nice statement. I have to look up and find out. Look more. up a nice statement. Yeah, right. sounds good. Yeah. Um, John, I'm having legal issues, but lawyers are so expensive. Can a paralegal help me? Uh, well, it depends on the issue. Now, for over a decade, paralegals in Ontario have been licensed, insured, regulated by the Law Society in much the same way as lawyers. Uh, depending on the type of matter you're faced with, a paralegal may be the perfect choice. Paralegals, unlike lawyers, have a limited scope of practice, which means most paralegals become quite skilled in one or two areas of law. And oh. also, paralegals are typically about half the price of lawyers, which means that they can assist you in advancing your claims for less. And we do work in areas like our tribunal system here in Ontario or our federal tribunal system, small claims court, and also Highway Traffic Act matters, for example, a variety of other areas as well. Okay. Are there any areas in specifics that paralegals cannot work in? Yes, absolutely. Uh, right now they're making, for example, family law. Currently, paralegals are not allowed to provide legal advice to people who are getting a divorce. That is changing, but currently our scope is restricted. We're also restricted, for example, in criminal law to only representing on summary offense matters. So if somebody were charged with murder, for example, a paralegal wouldn't be the right representative in that case. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Um, and, um, okay, so this one, this one kind of is for Audrey and Helen. So uh, we'll start with Helen. Where can I learn about mediation training? Oh, well, Lightstone Mediation Services is offering dispute resolution training in June, uh, June 24th to the 28th. And it's 40 hours and it's an introductory course great for anyone who wants to learn how to resolve conflict, uh, managers and HR departments, workplace supervisors, mm -hmm. anybody that want, that deals with people should be taking this course. So I you mean, can, yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say you can um, find out more at www.lightstonemediationservices.com. That's wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. You, you mean to say that like where people are in HR departments, don't they, don't they, don't they learn that when they get their HR degree or whatever? Or is it, or is this a, above and beyond that? I think it's, I think it's um, above and beyond. It's going to go into a little bit more depth than what somebody might have learned already. It's 40 hours. It's pretty comprehensive. And I, and I'm thinking too, if it was in a, like in the corporations that I've worked in, if there was a, a problem that needed mediation, chances are the HR person wasn't able to do it. Right? I think you're right. Yeah. So maybe they more of the, the more of them need this heavy duty training. Ex exactly. They do. So they they do. To John to go to court. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the, the other thing is, you know, somebody there, somebody in, a, in an HR department may not necessarily look entirely neutral to all employees. But I think that if they've got that sort of credential behind them that says they've gone outside the company to take HR training, and yes, they can be entirely neutral, I think it's entirely beneficial. Mm, okay. For everybody. That's awesome. And Audrey, you, uh, CGA, Community Justice Alternatives of Durham Region, also offers mediation training. Can you tell us about the training you offer? Uh, yes, our training actually is, is quite specific. Um, we offer uh, two 21-hour sessions. Uh, one is to learn to work with community, so community mediation training. Um, and then we have a restorative justice mediation training. And once you complete those trainings and have some practice with us, uh, you're then eligible to uh, work with us as a volunteer on one of our mediation rosters. Uh, it's a great way for young people to to gain experience and qualifications. We always mm -hmm. mix, you know, a senior mediator with a junior mediator. Um, and then this year, we're also offering a number of evening events, um, you know, two-hour sessions on things that we need to stay up to date on cultural considerations, um, you know, ethics, uh, changes that, that take place in, um, for example, you know, changes take place in family law, as an example. Uh, now, CJA doesn't train in family law, but it's critical that mediators and paralegals and, and of course, lawyers uh, do continue that education. And there are requirements for that mm -hmm. in, in the mediation organizations, as well as paralegal and uh, law firms. So uh, 
CJA has a full training uh, agenda and you can check us out at uh, cjadurham.org and uh, call us at any time. Wonderful. That's, that's awesome. Thank you, Audrey. Um, and John, um, maybe you could uh, tell us how we could contact you and find out more about uh, Cochrane Moore. Absolutely. Uh, we do have our website, lawinoshawa.com. If you go there, you'll see our practice areas as well as our partners and staff that we have at the office. We're always available if you want to give us a call as well. Our number is 905-240-4529. And beyond that, stop on in. We're at 57 Simcoe Street South. I would like to uh, say thank you all for uh, joining me today because, you know, I think uh, oftentimes uh, the resources in our community, um, you know, we don't, we don't tend to explore them so much. Um, and hopefully most of us are really nice people and we don't get in a lot of problems, but there are modern day Brutuses out there. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, um, having gone through a divorce, um, I understand that um, legal situations can go crazy. And, and I didn't know anything about mediation then. That probably would have been a really good option for me. Um, and I'm hoping that by, um, by spreading this video, that people will start to understand what, you know, all the, all the different alternatives um, to justice here in Durham. So thank you all for sharing today. I really appreciate uh, your time and, uh, and um, you helping out. And what I'll do is I will uh, post in um, all your contact information on a blog post so that we can, we can share, the, share, share mm -hmm. with everyone. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah, so you have a great day. And, um, and thanks. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.